friends, welcome to the podcast today. I'm so excited. I have my good pal, Eric Miller, out of Fort Lauderdale. And what's up with the hat today, Eric? Well, being you're in Texas and I'm in Florida, I couldn't decide how to get dressed. So I have palm trees on, a Stetson for you, and my sunglasses. God, you! Uh, I love it. I, I, I love, no, I'll I, take my hat off for you because I want to be a little bit more appropriate there. There we go. Okay. Well, I rely on you for that, those, that kind of shenanigans. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey, so, uh, so let's, let's ju jump right in. Um, today we're really, we're, we're going to talk about your real estate journey, but um, some of the things that are just really important to you in the industry and what you're seeing out there, like some things that like, what are agents getting wrong? What are they doing right? How can we move things forward in our businesses. And I know you got all sorts of really cool stuff going on in your business. So like I do. we could, we could do tons of podcasts uh, and mix it up. But, but today, you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna focus on, um, you know, a few things uh, going on in your business and what you're working on and advice that you have for other agents. Sound good? Perfect. So I was thinking about this last night and I want to, I want to tell you a quick thing that came to mind when I was a brand new agent, first day in the business, an agent comes running up to me. And I don't know, you know, a lot of people who watch this may not remember, but there were MLS books and there were these big, thick MLS books. Oh God. How long ago was that? <laughs> it's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to really admit it. Yeah. You had your uh, MapQuest book then too. Right. You right. Know, I did. I had, I had a, a book of maps. Yeah. That was reality. Yeah. But my very first day in business, an agent who I'm still good friends with today came running in and said, his books are outdated. Does anybody know how to use a computer? I'll pay you a hundred dollars to find me some listings. And I was absolutely convinced I had a new career because I knew how to use a computer. And my new career was going to be help realtors find listings because it was taking them so long to transition. Using a to computer, be, yeah. To using okay. a computer. Oh my God. Just, what yeah. year was that? That was in 2000. Serious, that was just in 2000. It was just in 2000. God, Isn't that's that amazing? Insane. You know, one of the reasons a lot of companies today talk about being the tech company of real estate is because real estate in general, we were behind. It was 2000 and we were printing books and we were handwriting contracts wow. and we were doing things totally differently. So we, as an industry, I think we've been playing catch up. That's why everyone gets to say I'm the new tech company. Yeah, that's really interesting because 20 years or I mean, with your math is 22, but let's let's just call it roughly 20. It's like, are you kidding me? Just 20 years ago in this industry, there were market still using the listing book that's insane wait a minute i my first contract was written with carbon paper oh my god and that is only 22 years ago it was a three-part form that you press through the pages god we're we're oh. dating ourselves this is We've scary come a long way well i don't know if we're dating ourselves that much or we're showing how quickly things can change in yes. an industry, yeah. once somebody lights the fire and realizes there's a better way to do it, yeah. you can be more effective with your time, That's right you. away, things yeah. start changing. Yeah. Well, and, and with that, so talk about that, that, that speed. Where will we even be one year from now, two and five, let alone 10? Because in, in technology terms these days, that's an extremely long, long time. Even, you know, one year, two years, you know, two years from now, um, the technology in our business is going to be very, very different. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things for realtors today is that technology is coming at us in every direction. I mean, we all get it. We get emails every day, we get text messages every day. Everybody's trying to sell us the new best mousetrap to do things. But what people don't realize is when you build yourself a real estate business and you're up and running every day, you're not wasting time, you're listing houses, you're selling houses, you're marketing houses, there is no extra time. Those changes of technology can kill you. 
They can set you back so dramatically that you need to be really sure about what's good for you and what's not good for you. Well, and I think, so, I think you're making a good, a really important point here in that one thing I heard when you said that, and, and tell me if you were going there or, or not, is we are bombarded. And honestly, I'm sure that applies to other industries as well. We just happen to, this is our lane with, with real estate. Almost for, for some folks, you have to train yourself. You don't have to look at everything that's coming your way. That's right. You don't have to respond to everything that's coming your way. Every single thing that's surfacing in the industry, you wouldn't get anything done if you felt like you had to keep up with every single new technology or development or technique or this or on and on and on you wouldn't get anything done so nope. i am a firm believer that one of the things I, I don't know if we're talking about our particular company today but if we are one of the things i love about the company we are with is that i feel if there's a technology or something out there that people are winning with i'm going to hear about it it's not going to be a secret we have to be careful about ch chasing the wrong things. And it's kind of like with all of this technology, and I can argue this all day long, and you know, both you and I are very uh, tech oriented, yet with all this technology, I still think agents succeed, the majority of agents succeed considerably on the non-technology stuff. The Absolutely. technology helps us get the job done, but at the end of the day, and you've heard me say this, at the end of the day, we're in the business of having conversations with people about real estate. So you can show me all your fancy gadgets, but I'm still going to ask you, how many people did you talk to about real estate this week? And, you know, we could say talking to people is having a conversation, even social media, but bringing it down to a conversation. And yes, you have to talk to people. You know, the first thing I tell any of my mentees is, does every single person you know know at this minute that you're a realtor and that you're looking for customers. Yeah, and if the answer and, to that is no, that's the only thing that they should do over the next few that, days. That is it. So yeah. I want to tell you two things from that first lady who uh, came to me about, you know, did I know how to use a computer? Okay, 20 years One of the, one, two years, one of the wonderful ago. things about that is that I became friends with people in an office that were way above me in real estate. I mean, I was the newbie. I thought I had interviewed for a job and just, you know, put my tie on and gotten a job in real estate. So I became very good friends with some people who in those days were mega producers. Mm -hmm. And I will always forget two lines that came from two different people. And one of them is very relative to this bombardment of technology and buying leads. And he said to me, he said, Eric, just remember in this industry, it's not about how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. And that was very early on, and 22 years later, I still remember him telling me that. Nice. Because so in those days, they were selling us signs that had lights that flood, they floodlit your sign at night. So the person driving by at night could see your sign. But there was always somebody selling you something. And I tell my mentees, buy nothing. OK, until you've exhausted every free thing out there and know you are doing all the free things in this world to make yourself stand out as an incredible realtor by your business cards. Yeah, that's it. Well, and here's and, and I want to throw this out. It, it's like it, it's easy to get a real estate license, but it's hard to stay in the business. Right. And and part of that is if you look at your business, who is teaching you kind of in the industry, in your brokerage, in your business? Who is teaching you? There's two aspects. There's how to do real estate, okay? And there's a heck of a lot there, and we're actually going to talk about that. We're going to talk about agent competency, okay? But who is teaching you how to build and succeed in a business? Who's teaching you how to be an entrepreneur? How's te who's teaching you how to build a decent pipeline? You know, who, who's, who, who is your who? So what is your goal? Uh, why do you want that? And here's the key question. Who's helping you get there? And there's two aspects of the business, the, the contractual and really, really, really knowing how to uh, advocate, uh, advocate and negotiate properly for your clients and win your offers. And the other is just how to run a successful real estate business. 
and they're in there. Yeah, let's go to contracts first. Okay, let's, that, let's do that. that Cause yeah, you yeah. have said, and you and I have talked about this off and on uh, recently, um, but you said um, our industry needs better trained agents. Yep. Let's I've been saying that. this for, I've been saying this for a very long time. Um, somebody once asked me at a big meeting, what's the biggest problem in real estate today? And I responded with poorly trained agents. Mm -hmm. And the crowd went crazy. The room went wild. They all raised their hands. Lots of people agreed. Um, I'm going to quote another real estate friend of mine. And he once said to me, making a mistake and getting yourself in trouble is a terrible time to read your contract. <laughs> <laughs> OK? Yeah. yeah. So um, I actually, when we were in a world of doing very long buyer presentations, because being the market is so skewed right now towards buyers have to go at 90 miles an hour, which maybe it would be appropriate time to do it. I used to, as part of my buyer presentation, sit down and go over the real estate contract. Oh, gosh, that's that's time and consuming. I did, no, I did it very, very quickly. I got it down to all the important points. OK, it was like here was our nine page contract. And I basically explained some parts of the country where you come from, uh, the attorney will write the contract. Where I am, the realtor is going to write the contract. So you need to feel comfortable with it because if we find the house you love, we might be doing this on the trunk of a car. And it's going to be much more That's a good point. That's know? a good point. So you can take, and you're in Florida, I'm in Texas, our contracts are different yet similar. You could take that nine page contract. How many is mine? Mine, I think, is 11 uh, is the number. You could take that contract. And, and I could say to the buyer, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, um, I want to explain, in my opinion, what are the five most important things in this 11 page document that's important for us to, uh, for you to understand and for you to be comfortable with. So let's hit that real quick. I mean, is that kind of what you're talking about? Oh, absolutely. It, it, I want to get two things out of it. One, I'm going to get past that first part of fear. Yes. that we could be signing something today. We're going out house hunting. I could do it in, the, I could at this point go over that contract in the front yard of the first house. Yes. That's how I've gotten it down to a very tight presentation. Yeah. We may be signing something today. I have it ready to go. So I'm being optimistic that we're gonna find the right house. And I also reassure them that on our contract, the inspection period allows them to back out for any reason at all. We have that but too get, in Texas. Right. Yeah. But getting, getting someone to go through that process of signing the first time is, it's a really good process for people. It takes away a fear level. Um, mm -hmm. it, it shows that they're ready to buy a house. Now, there's something really good about it for me going over with them. If they respond to me, oh, we don't have to go over the contract. That's not important then I'm not gonna show them the extra few houses that I have planned for the day. <laughs> They're only gonna see a few. Because if I know they are not the least bit interested in writing that offer, we don't need to go see every single house. Yeah, be better to see three than six, because you're, you're, you're at risk of, um, of wasting, wasting time. I always like to tell my clients, this is just one of my phrases that, that seems to make sense. I'll, I'll say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, Everything we do is designed to protect your time, but it's also designed to protect mine. Fair? Absolutely fair. I love, I love that, that conversation. And a reasonable person is going to say, oh, you're right. That is fair. Great. I appreciate you protecting my time. And I totally understand the concept of protecting your time as well. If, you your, know, bud I... if your budget is, is 500, we're not going to look at houses listed at 700. Right. There's just no reason. There's no um, reason. You can go to I, some gotten, house if you're just curious. I've gotten, I mean, buyer presentations change over time, okay? Sure. As do seller presentations. I mean, everybody wants to hear a different story these days. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I used to do in a buyer presentation, if you would have said to me, I want to go out and see houses in Oakland Park, I would have, as we got together, I would have printed out the three last sales that sort of proved my point. Um, if I wanted to show them three sales that just sold over listing price, I'd pull those three and I'd say, I just want you to look. This was on the market for six. It sold for 625. 
and I'd only go over one of two one of two things: price, days on market, and I would probably pull houses that were in similar condition to the, what they're looking. At. It's just you know how quickly can I get my customer to be an educated consumer? Because nobody makes a decision until they feel comfortable doing that they're educated enough to do it. Let me say that again. That's, I'm going to quote you. How quickly can I get my client to the point of being an educated consumer? Absolutely. So I did, I did a Facebook post this morning. Okay. And I might have, mm-hmm. might have it here. I, I have it right here. I posted this morning on Facebook. For anybody in Broward County who doesn't know this, in all of Broward County, there are 3,600 single family and condominiums on the market. I think every realtor needs to know that in the morning, okay? Because I, I could tell that to every mm-hmm. consumer. And a balanced market where buyers and sellers, neither one really has an advantage, we'd be about 20,000 units. Yikes. And if you want yeah. to hear how I, I, I pain myself during the day, I go on the MLS and I'll look Broward County. How many properties have been listed today? And how many went either pending or um, active under contract? Yeah. So what's the net? I, <laughs> the net is always negative five. <laughs> you know, we are not gaining anything any day. We're not gaining. Yeah. So there, I don't see any route of us going from thirty six hundred to twenty thousand where we have a balanced market anytime soon. In South Florida, we would have needed an event, and hurricane season has ended. So we're not having that event. Then we could look at world events. Interest rates going up is not going to make that happen. No, it's not going to. It's happen. not historically. They're they're fine. I listened to an economist the other day, and he said when interest rates go up a point. Actually, he said when interest rates go up a half a point, you may feel a little pause in the market for sixty to ninety days, and then it's business as usual. How so when I'd you like, bought I'd your like first home? That. When you bought your first home, what was the interest rate? Uh, I think I was about eight and a half. Okay, I think I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to argue that point that he made. I yell at MSNBC and CNBC a lot when I'm watching TV at night and they have realtor economists come out. There was one this morning, so I'm going to tell you what he had to say, okay. which I thought was hysterical. But I think when interest rates go up for a brief period of time, the market explodes. Mm-hmm. Because all those people running around going, I'm going to buy sooner or later. Go, oh, I got to no. buy now. Fear of fear of missing out. Yeah, they're like, they have oh my to god, buy now. Yeah, you're right. A little surge and then some caution and then normalcy. So yep. yeah, I could see that. I think there's two groups of people how they respond. One is, oh my god, I'm buying now, and the other is, uh, what's going on? And then it's business as usual. It's business as usual. Well, one of the reports this morning, and um, you can tell what type of economist you're talking to when they say um, mortgage applications and they don't divide it between purchases and refis. Yeah. Okay. Guess what? Mortgage applications are dropping and they're going to continue to drop because everybody who was planning to refi and stay in their home has pretty much already done it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that piece, that piece of the mortgage business is over. So it doesn't take a brilliant, brilliant economist to sit there and realize that if that part of the business is gone, mortgage applications are going to be dropping. So in the same sentence, this economist on TV this morning said, I think real estate prices are going to continue to rise. Inventory is going to continue to drop. And because of that, we probably will have less transactions in 2022. Okay, none of that is that alarming. Or, or is it anything other than what we would expect? Was he talking no Florida or national? No, this was national. Mm. You know, if there's less inventory, there will probably be less transactions. I mean, I didn't get on TV for that this morning. You know, it was sort of like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's pretty, that's pretty basic. So let's, let's talk about your, your real estate business a, a little bit. What's working really well in your business right now, even with this current market? Okay. So I, I, I like to sometimes say that we need to go back to the things we have forgotten to do. And over the years, the most effective thing for me in business has been to be the expert at something. You know, we talk about when you got your real estate license, 
We talk about don't do things you really don't know how to do, go out and refer it out. I think we had a similar conversation the other day about if it's commercial, go ahead and refer it to somebody. I love, I am the expert of a particular area of condominiums. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it is a nice piece of my business. I've been at that build, build one particular building, which if you lay it down, it's a farm area. It's almost 300 units. Um, lay it on its side. It's an entire neighborhood. And I've been doing a tremendous business there since about 2000 and building 2004 is when yeah. it converted to a condominium. I really like being an expert of something. Yeah. The other one where I tend to market myself a great deal is uh, multifamily, two and three unit rental properties, duplexes. There's a certain language of real estate that I think it's really important that realtors just sort of learn certain words and they heard them in their first class. They just sort of forgot them. Like what? And, like cap rate. If you don't know what a cap rate is, you're going to get caught off guard one day because it's not that big a wild term. It's not that big of a term, but if you're not familiar with it, then um, stay out of investment property until you do understand that. Just well, go read a few articles. You'll you'll be on your feet with it. But that's the language. You have to speak the language in the area in which you are practicing and serving your clients. So what's the language? And well, when I you know when I used to start off with brand new agents in Fort Lauderdale, I don't know who will watch our podcast someday, but there will be some agents who will see this and uh -huh. they'll go, "Oh God, he did that to me." I used to tell them <laughs> to drive up the beach and start at the very first building and look at the building and go, okay, that's Hermitage, that's South Point, that's Gold Ocean Terrace. I said, because otherwise you're gonna get in the car one day and a client is gonna say to you, oh, what's that brown building over there? And you're gonna look like the worst thing in the world, a brand new realtor. Just be able to have an intelligent conversation. Go to open houses, let other realtors talk. You'll learn a lot from them. Yeah. Well, and even, you know, and start for most agents, for most agents, start geographically where you are person, where you live. Absolutely. I and lived in that building. Like, yeah, exactly. And so in your case, it's like, look, do you know? So if you're if you're in a condo building in South Florida, do you know the 10 buildings to the south and the 10 buildings to the to the north? and the 10 buildings um, to the west of you, start there, know your inventory. What is what, what is what, It's a, just start there. For me- you know, There aren't too many things in real estate that I've done well over the years yeah. that are consistent. You know, you, I think we all do things that fall apart. The one that can't fall apart for me is MLS every morning. Oh, okay. You, yeah. I have to look first thing in the morning and I probably do it three more times by the end of the day. What went pending? What came active? I think Zillow has done, Zillow has forced realtors to be on guard because the worst phone call in the world to me is when a client calls me up and says, so did you see the property that just came on the market? Right, and, and you didn't, you hadn't. No, I didn't. They you saw it before me. You That's can't terrible. be that person. <laughs> yeah. You gotta say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're typing away, you're gonna like find it before they start telling you. But um, so you got to be on top of it. Let's let's talk. I want to shift just a little bit um, uh, because and this is another thing that you and I have talked about a little bit. And, and I want I want to dive into it because I know you have some strong opinions, <laughs> but it's the uh -oh. you said agents need to be super well behaved. I'm quoting you to other agents. Oh, yes. What's behind that? I've never done this, but if I went online today and printed out. I shouldn't say I never done, did it. I once did it as an inspirational thing. I went on the MLS and printed one long page of all the deals I ever did. Okay. And I think it was 300 deals. But if I ever had to look at it, I would bet you there are no more than 25 agents where I've done more than one deal at a time. Oh, oh wow. The reason is, you know, I had a letter once. Are we allowed to mention a company? I had a letter from Coldwell Banker. Okay. The broker from Coldwell Banker was thanking me for understanding the definition of a transaction broker and helping his agent completely walk through a deal and doing it correctly. And she had 
a family emergency in the midst of the deal. Mm -hmm. I took care of the whole deal, both sides of it, yeah. and just kept her abreast of the situation. And we still speak to this day. Nice. Um, you did what you needed to do to keep that transaction moving forward because everyone has, we have that, ob you had that obligation. That's our obligation. That is, that is our job. No matter what type of market you're in, whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, it will serve you well to be able to get on the phone and have the other agent know that you are a good agent, a good person, but to treat them with respect. And there's really nothing you can't talk about to get the deal done. Every once in a while, you'll get an agent who just approaches the business, I'm quoting someone else's term here, that, that is every deal is to them like they're negotiating a divorce. And that mm -hmm. is a very bad way to approach a deal. In a multi-offer market like we're in today, people can deny it all day long. But if you see somebody that you've done business with before, know they're friendly, know they're a pleasure to do business with, know they know what they're doing, you know what, there's going to be a little extra check mark next to their offer when you're sitting with a client and you're going to say, uh, who, uh, a, a seller and you're going to say, by the way, I know this agent, they have already provided us with a desktop underwriting, they've provided us, the offer's clean, this is somebody we know. I think over my 22 years, I really can't think of any agents that I've ever had like a total blow up that didn't end well. Mm -hmm. I once stood up an agent at an appointment and I was so mortified that I stood her up. I screwed up my day that that night I sent her a dozen roses because it was just like, what did I do? I had her standing there for an hour yeah, and waiting for me. I mean, you screwed up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I screwed up. I, I royally screwed up. Mm -hmm. And you know what? For the, whatever it was to send a dozen roses, it, it was like the right thing to do. Made her day too. Her, her husband was a little concerned, but other than that, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What do you, um, let's talk, I always like on this podcast, I always like to have advice for agents to really help them make, make this business work. And there are, you know, there are agents that struggle. There are really, really good agents that may get in a sticky point in their business or something may, may be happening personally in their lives and their business slows down and they have to dial it up. There's all sorts of things or the market maybe, you know, throws them for a loop. Um, but what advice do you have for an agent who, needs to lean into their business, whether they're just getting started or they need a restart or, you know, they're just, their business is not currently in a healthy state. What, what is your advice to agents? Cause I know you mentor a lot of agents, you're an yep. awesome mentor. What, what's your advice? You know, I think we, we get very scared when big agents tell us to go make a list of a hundred people we know the second somebody says, make a list of 100 people you know, I think most people go, do I know 100 people? Because your, your 3,000 Facebook friends are not really people you know. Right. And I tell people, I want you to figure out the one person you know. Oh. Okay? I only want one person. And I want you to call that person and tell them exactly what you're doing. And I want you to say to them that I am making sure I'm launching my real estate career. I know you've been in your home for a few years. I know you're probably not a seller or a buyer, but would you be okay if I sent you like 10 of my business cards in the mail and over the next week, can, can I count on you every now and then just to give somebody one of my cards and say, hey, this is a friend of mine. There's a great agent. Anybody you know, would you please pass this on and get them going? And you only have to do one person this week. Yeah. And next, next week, you got to do two though. Um, mm -hmm. but you, it, it's less alarming than I, a lot of companies teach that thing and make a list of 50 people. And this week you got to call all 50 of them. Right. You know, if you get one really good person, I'm not going to do this math on you, but if you get one really good person mm -hmm. giving out 10 of your cards and over about a five week period, you get five or six people talking about you. And then a few more people talking about you. Before you know it, you will have people talking about you. Nice. And 
That, that's you got to start off with what makes you feel comfortable. You know, there's nothing in this business to be scared about. There's this great line that nobody ever bleeds out in real estate. And what does that mean? <laughs> we're not doing brain surgery. If we make a mistake, we can fix it. Okay. Like okay. Yeah. So if your first phone call doesn't go perfect, your second one's going to go better. You know, um, but you want to be prepared when once you start giving out those cards. You want to be prepared with what you're going to say when the phone rings, because it is going to ring if yeah. you do that. Yeah. The phone is going to ring. Yeah. I am. Um, I gave I, I challenged some agents just this morning. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to teach this in a few weeks uh, on our uh, weekly mastermind that you and I do. Um, but I challenged some agents. And one's a newer agent and the other is a very experienced agent, but she really focuses on her business. So it's interesting to have the same conversation with both of them. And I challenged them to do 30 CMAs in 30 days. And, and all that is, is just every day, just pick one friend, one neighbor, just one person that you know, and you need to do this anyways. This is how we stay really sharp uh, with the market and do do a quick market analysis. And right now in so many cities, the numbers are, are bonkers. And, and this stuff is really interesting to people. So just do a, a, a quick CMA, call your friend up, actually text them and say, oh my God, I just ran some numbers on your neighborhood. I wanna run them by you. Do you have a minute? And you're just gonna get them on the phone. You can email them the report and you're talking through it. You say, let me show you what I'm seeing. And this is what it's been year over year in the last few homes and da, 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 da. That's a substantial real estate conversation that you can have with someone. It's easy, I'm it's not natural. Sure I understand. Oh, whoops. You know, it's so rude when Siri jumps in and you haven't asked her to join the conversation. <laughs> it's just so annoying. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the 30, uh, the 30 CMAs in, in 30 days. So I think any agent who needs or wants to dial it up or is, is trying to create just uh, some structure. And for you, like part of that structure is it's completely non-negotiable that you jump in the MLS every morning and you look at the key statistics. Okay. See, that's the one non-negotiable in my life. That's your non-negotiable. And that's I would say for... For a new agent that's that needs to build and needs to lean in, um, do this this thirty and thirty thing. And I like your call one person and with with the ten cards thing. Absolutely. You know, we used to have uh, we used to have an office, and there was a a video that came up every now and then, and there was a little old lady on the video. Yeah. And she'd come in and she'd say like this. And she'd come closer and she'd say nothing. And she'd get closer and closer to the screen. And then when she got her face fully in the screen, she'd say, just pick up the damn phone. And it was reality. Hey, it's hard for all of us. Hey, you're in the business of having conversations with people about real estate. So if you didn't have any conversations with people about real estate today, guess what? You didn't work. So I hope you enjoyed the day and really took it off as a day off because that's what it was. It was a day off. No, I was busy. I did this and this and this and this and that. No, you're busy with the wrong things. Just pick up the damn phone. And doing yeah, 30 other... CMAs in 30 days is a really super easy, constructive, and valuable way to do that. Um, Remember so... the line, every sale leads to another couple in the neighborhood? Yeah. Remember we used to say that every yes. house that sells usually leads to two more. Yes. Somewhere we've gotten confused thinking that it had to be our sale. It leads to someone's sale. <laughs> if anybody's sale is going to lead to two more, because if if you're if you're in a neighborhood where the average sale is five hundred thousand, and all of a sudden a home sells for six hundred thousand, guess what? There are two more people out there who are going to be going, "Oh my God." Well, and guess what? If you're watching the MLS every day and you're on top of it, like you just on top of it, then when you and you have a friend in that neighborhood, you see that. And all you do is you just pick up the phone and you go, oh, my God, let me tell you what just happened in your neighborhood. That's a great conversation. And then part of that yeah. conversation is, who do you know in your neighborhood 
that needs this information. I want to talk, can we yeah. introduce me to that person, please? Technology has changed the way we do things, but the reality is we're not doing anything different than we did 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I sent out a postcard that had little stars on it. It was all black. And it said, would you like to hear what I did with your neighbor last night? Yeah. <laughs> and on the other side, it said, we sold their home. It's good. Hey, tell me, what's something you're working on in your business this year? What do you focus on? What are your goals? Where are you going? Well, this is a little different because I'm older and I've been around a long time. So this isn't a little bit totally fair for new agents. Um, my goal is to work my websites, work my blogs. I'm going to go back to that over for, in, briefly for one second. Um, I want to generate leads for people. Um, yeah, my, you had said this caught my attention that one of your goals this year, I had it written down somewhere. One of your goals this year is to give out 30 referrals. To, yes. What, what is that? Right. Um, I am not looking to build a team. I am not an internal team. I am not looking to add assistants and clericals. I've done that whole routine and I'm probably going to finish the 12 months doing 30 deals on my own. Okay. okay? Which is exhausting. That's, that's a lot of real estate. It's a lot of real estate. Now, fortunately would, for you, I'll just add that a lot of your real estate is very geographically tight. That makes mm -hmm. it a lot easier. Yes. I am not driving all over the world. No. And you're not having to like relearn a, a particular uh, neighborhood for every transaction. No, I'm complaining about having to drive two miles today, but I'll be okay. Well, baby. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, I know. It's rough. And I'll drive... I'll drive 20, you know. Right, exactly. It's a, di a different market, you know. Yeah. And then when I, if I'm doing business up in North Carolina, I think totally differently. You know, you're lucky if you could show three homes in a day. I am a, the, the second thing that I did every morning when I was like 100% on was I did a blog post every morning. Okay. So you know, I'm a big believer in blogging. MLS and then a blog post. And how much then time would post. you spend? How much time would you spend on that? If I am like really on it, I could do my MLS stuff in about 10 minutes and I could have the blog post done in a half hour. Okay, really can have it done. We're talking 300 words, get it out there. Social media has added so much to that pile and it has pulled me away from it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But one of my goals is to get back to that so I can give out 30 referrals next year. I want to give out more and more referrals to business. Um, I like working on my websites. I like working on my blogs. Yeah. You know, that, that's what I love doing. Well, and you're, and you're good at it. There are other agents that should just stay away from that, that stuff. It, it, it's not a good use of their time for you. It's a very good, it's a good right. use of and, time. And if it's not a good use of your time, then that falls into the category of someday you want to pay somebody to do something for you. Yeah. As long as you're getting, you know, that return on the investment on it, you know, then you, then you find a way to do it. Um, there are tons of companies out there that are trying to sell you social media posts and blog posts, but there are also ones doing it for free. There are things you could pull up for yeah. free. You know, I don't know if you saw on Facebook the last few days, I had like three new listings that I posted in these beautiful collages. Mm -hmm. And those, those were all done on a free website. So there's lots of things you can do um, for free, but that's, you know, one of the things I do want to do more of I love talking to clients on the phone. A lot of my Fort Lauderdale business and the North Carolina business come from out of town clients. Um, I'm very happy starting that conversation on the phone, doing the buyer interview, having the conversation, and then being able to pass them on to different people. That's a mature business is, is what that is. Well, actually you could start off that, that way. That would be, that'd be pretty cool. But I, but I, I love that that's where you're at in your business. But part of that formula for you is that you have to be in business with the right people in terms of who you're referring that to. Let's touch on. Uh, I want to touch on you joining EXP, which you did a couple years. Was it two years ago? Now maybe? We're at about we're about a year and a half. Okay, year and a half. So <laughs> yeah. you moved your business. You had been with Keller Williams for a long time. Um, uh, um just for over 14 years. Okay, that's 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 solid. And you moved your business to EXP. Tell me about yeah. that. Why? What? There are a lot of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And I will tell you, the number one, one is not financial. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's great that EXP costs me less money. 
And I think it's great that I'll put more money in my pocket. Yeah. I said, you know, it's all about what you keep, but that is not the number one reason. Mm -hmm. um, number one reason is if, if I could quantify it, I found two hours a day by not having to be in an office. Um, I'll tell you the, the hardest thing that for me to get used to at EXP has actually been a win for me, but it took me a little while to get used to it. Okay. okay? okay. Mm -hmm. And I, my analogy is, and I've said this to a few people, I visualize a real estate deal as a tennis match. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. You write the offer, you lob the ball over, and you wait to hear from the other agent. Yeah. Right? You wait Hopefully for the ball to back. come back over the net. Hopefully it comes back really fast. Okay. You forget to fill out something on the form. You hand it in to the administrator. It's on her side now or his side waiting to come back. Yeah. My old company, and I'm not going to pick on Keller Williams. When I was at Coldwell or Avida, those administrative processes always were on the other side. The ball was never on my side. I never felt panicked that the company had already done their part and they were waiting on me. At EXP, they are so responsive yeah. about yeah. deal stuff and broker stuff. It comes back to you so quickly that I had to accept, okay, these things are going to wait on me. Well, and I'm you can see it. And you see it on your screen. You so, see it. And it so comes the back tennis, really The tennis quickly. match is on your screen. You're like, oh my God, the ball's back in my court already. It's awesome. back in my court already. Done. Yeah. I've never had to wait for a commission distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever we call it here. I've never had to wait for it. I've never had to go asking for a check. And, and these were the, it came on after I joined the XP. Um, I, I was very slow on this. I mean, if I told you when I bought my first EXP stock, it was long time ago. It was right. less than a dollar a share. I was watching. It was a long um, time before you joined the company. You, you, you yes. Bought, you so I was stock. watching the process, but being more in control of what I go to every week, how I get there, that I could just sit at my desk and decide I'm going to go to this class. And if it's not the right class for me, I just click out and go on to the next process. There's so much going on all the time mm -hmm. that if I have the time to do it, I mean, I have a little list on the side of my desk here of things that I want to attend at EXP. Yeah. And I mean, that's an absolute yeah. win. Well, and we have, so um, I know an, a top agent, well, Melanie. So my, uh -huh. I'm a, um, my, one of my business partners here in Austin and one of the top agents uh, in the country. So, you know, she's, she's rocking and rolling. She goes in, so every Sunday evening, she goes in uh, online and looks at the training calendar for the next week. And she picks a couple classes that she wants to take every week now. And I'm sure sometimes her schedule gets in the way and it doesn't happen, but that's part of her weekly process is she's always looking for that. And, and that's the, just, it, it's such a huge value. I find. Um, now, I'm going to tell you one, one of the pieces. and this was probably going to go full circle to something I said before, um, when we were talking about technology and I was saying how dramatic it is when a realtor has to make a change. In my prior company for a very long time, I, it was indoctr indoctrinated into me that you didn't want anybody else owning your data. Okay. okay? This, was, this was a big thing at our prior company. Yes. You know, and then, so we always had third party vendors who, that if we left the company, we could take it with us. I love that EXP uses third-party vendors because EXP is big enough that if for any reason those third parties are not performing to the level we need them to perform, they're going to shape up quickly and they're going to respond to whatever EXP needs them to do. Whereas <laughs> when you build your own thing and you're building it in an ivory tower somewhere in Austin, I mean, somewhere in Texas or whatever, and you can't even find out how to tell the person what's wrong for you. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to tell you a quick story on this one, a little side note. When the mobile app came up at our former company and the building I did the most business in showed up on the mobile app as a red dot and always showed up as one listing. Now, that wouldn't have been so bad if it was Keller Williams listing. 
but it never was because Keller Williams was always at the bottom and whoever had a listing above Keller Williams was the one that showed up at the condo. I cannot tell you how many hours I tried to talk to somebody in technology to explain yeah. to them that I know it's set up for single family homes, but there were also condominium buildings. And I understand that you can only show one listing, but it's got to be ours first. So it wasn't it wasn't working. It didn't it it didn't handle a really important slice of of the market. So it, it was a hugely important thing to me. Yeah. And when it first came out, the mobile app, I embraced it so dramatically. Yeah. I mean, maybe that was my mistake. Yeah. Uh, but I was actually calling clients. And I was actually getting in the car with clients and going, give me your phone. And I was actually taking their phone and putting the mobile app on their phones. Yeah, yeah. And then finding out it didn't serve the purpose I needed it. I, I don't blame them. Um, I do blame that every time we get new technology, at some point, we need to make sure it really works for the realtors. Yeah, yeah. And when you're, when you're using third party, and I like it, it's like you have the entire industry deck to choose from and find out like which one is best and why tie that one into and, and get them in. In some cases they can end up talking to each other. So they're not always totally standalone. They can overlap. Yeah, it works. I'm thrilled with the it technology. Is a, there's platform. a comfort feeling, a comfort knowing that everybody at eXp is using a similar platform. It's some of the it best works. technology I've ever worked with um, in, in my 22 years. I've been on lots of systems. I've been on a lot of different CRMs. I've been on a lot of different contract programs. And, and I'm, I'm really pleased with, with what, what we're working on. Hey, let's, yeah, um, I am. yeah let's, let's wrap this up um, a little bit. Um, what is, uh, what's one final piece of advice that you have for agents out there? I really take this to heart. Don't spend so much time worrying about what's going to happen in the real estate market. Worry a little bit more about your business, <clears throat> excuse me, the way you behave, honing your own skills, being better and better at who you are, and you're going to be fine in any market. There are always people buying homes. There are always people selling homes, and you're going to be fine. If you know what you're doing, I swear. You know, I've been accused of reinventing myself like five times in the last 20 years. And guess what? I never did it. All I did was stick with what I knew to do and find ways to do business in every market shift. I think that I think that's really good advice. Cool. It's always good to shift, you know. It is good it's to the nature shift. of real estate, but people are always gonna buy and sell homes. It's true. I'm not gonna change. So worry worry less about the the market and where it's going and more about who you're being in your own business on a, on I, a give, I want to give you one of the pieces we wrap this up okay. you know we were all taught in real estate that it was local real estate was always local you know i took a great fair housing class the other day and we talked about you know the right side of the railroad tracks the wrong side of the tracks real estate was always local and yet as social media keeps building with twitter and facebook we hear more and more national real estate reports that get us all wrapped up. I mean, I love you guys, but the weather in Austin means nothing to me today. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My real estate market is right out that window. And, you know, I don't care that they're going to, that Amazon is building a warehouse. <laughs> Uh, right? It right. doesn't matter. Yeah. All that matters is my local market. And we need to remember, you know, when somebody says to you, you know, there's the Gary Keller's old line, um, uh, how's the real estate market? Well, you know, which one are you looking to buy or sell? Which market are you talking about? Are you talking about the neighborhood you live in? Yeah. Which market are you talking? How's the market? Which, well, which market are you talking about? Where do we about? want to talk about? That's good. That's a good, that's a good response. I kind of forgot about that one. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining uh, today. And um, my pleasure. It was great talking to you. Yeah. I All got right, as much me... out of it as you did. All right. <laughs>